Uh, this little guy was actually in a zoo in East Texas. He bit a little girl at three weeks old. But yeah, man, welcome back to the Snake Trap Sessions. I am so excited to be back. gentlemen we are not in Cali anymore I can tell you that much right now what is good everybody it's your boy MJ up in Texas okay sorry about the lawnmower I'm gonna step over here but anyways welcome back to another episode of the snake draft session vlogs if this is your first time tapping in do your boy a favor hit that like button hit that subscribe button drop that notification bell make sure you drop a comment let me know how you're liking these vlogs but make sure you tap in for all these vlogs that I'm dropping here on a weekly basis I want to say shout out to all my subscribers shout out to my patreon members if you're looking for exclusive content go down the link below join the trap talk patreon family today for all exclusive content but guys look at that star you know what that means Big Earl in the building. We have a podcast going down tonight, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Right before we do that, we're going to go ahead and get some footage of Earl's private collection. Earl has a bunch of sick-ass animals, more than just reptiles. So we're going to tap in with the homie Big Earl. There's other people tapping in right now into his house. There's a big pre-party going on for Arlington and ARBC. So why don't we get straight to business, go in, tap in with some homies, and see what this is all about. Gee. Good everybody, look who I have right here in front of me, Big Earl, Lone Star and Reptiles. What is good, my man? Uh, everything's good, man, life is good. I can't believe I'm on your property right now. <laughs> so many legendary stories about people visiting this place, even seen such amazing vlogs, like the homie Miguel who had a vlog right. here. But I'm so excited to be here, because you're very diverse with what you keep as far as animals, man. Very diverse. So, since we're in your backyard, can you exactly what it is that you keep right, back so here? let's start with Roscoe, Dakota Monday. Roscoe, you wanna come outside? Come on. Yes. Come on, buddy. Come here. Hey. Roscoe. Uh, he don't know I have marshmallows. So marsh <laughs> so marshmallows is his thing? That's his treat? Oh yeah. He's trying to go inside. Yeah, he's going to try to go in the house. Hey, wow, come wow. here. Oh, how neat this thing look, is, look man. Look what I got. Oh my goodness. We got marshmallows. So where are these things from, Earl? So this one's from Brazil. Uh, this little guy was actually in a zoo in East Texas. He bit a little girl at three weeks old, and so I went and got him. Come here, come here. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna go back over. Here. Okay, okay. Once an animal bites in the zoo, they either have to get rid of them or put them down. And there's no reason to put an animal down like this. I mean, they're they're amazing animals. Uh, you do have to watch your open toes too. He loves toes. I got you. <laughs> um, hey, buddy. Just an awesome animal. Uh, and he's just been, I mean, amazing. We're going to get him a girl girlfriend here pretty soon. That's a potato. You don't even want a potato. So it looks very, really, it looks like an exotic raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> so they're kind of like a cross between a raccoon and a bear. Wow. And then they kind of got that anteater looking nose. This thing is so cool looking. So again, you've had this thing for about how long now? About Earl? six years. Six years? Yeah. So the age on him is about roughly how old? Uh, they'll get about 15 to 18 years old. Okay. And he's about how old, you would say? Uh, he's six. Man, what a neat we'll grab his mark. Okay. Dude. Come on, More marshmallows, buddy. Come on. Come on. It's right here chilling in the backyard. Over here. Come here. So is he kept outside all, all year round? Yep. 
Yeah, so his little house up here is 75 degrees year round. Wow. And so we never have to worry about anything with him. He'll come out when he's ready to, in the winter time. Uh, normally he'll stay inside pretty much year round when it's cold. All right, over here, these guys are kind of hiding. Uh, this is a breeding pair of tegus. There's the male. Oh my lord, look at that. What's up, buddy? I don't know where the female is at. She's buried in here somewhere. Um, he's, long, about, how, he's about seven years old. The female is about three. How long have you been breeding these for now, Earl? Uh, this is my second season actually breeding them. Uh, and unfortunately this year we had 24 eggs laid in the water bowl. Uh, it was so hot here. I mean, it was 112 degrees when she laid eggs and she was trying to do anything to find a cool spot and she laid the eggs in the water. And then this is Turbo. What? Turbo, what is good? Don't be shy, Turbo. I've right. always been fascinated with porcupines, man. Turbo, come here. You gotta be kidding me. Hey, come here. Come here. Come here, buddy. I got a tater. Hey, I got a tater. I got a tater. Come here, buddy. I got a tater. I got a tater. Oh my Quick. god, look at this fool. You gotta be kidding me. Wow. Oh, he no, dipped. No, no. <laughs> oh, he dipped. He dipped. So, Earl, as far as, the, as far as the spores being like, like you know, how, do, how does that work? Like, as far as if they wanted to f poke you with those, what right, so would it do? It's back into you. They can't shoot them. Okay. Uh, I actually had one stuck through one of my crocs the other night. Uh, he was a little rambunctious and didn't want to go back in the house. He sleeps inside at night. Uh, I could put him in my snake room. Unfortunately, these things dig really fast and they can dig 90 feet a night easy. So I don't want him out in the street, you know, because everybody knows where he's from. Right. But especially, <laughs> there's a sign on the gate that says, beware of highly trained porcupine not responsible for injury or death. There's your warning. And, People come in the backyard and he's running around the yard and they're like amazed. This little run during the day and uh, he tears the swimming pool up. We get to change the water every day. Every day, I'm assuming, right? We go through about, that's his eighth swimming pool so far. Now, did all these exotic animals come from different people or are they all coming from the same person? Oh no, they're they're imported. Uh, he's imported from Africa. Uh, I got a girl that imports a lot of animals. Uh, She's out of Tennessee, and she brings in a lot of these. I'm actually getting an albino female for him, so he's getting a, a girlfriend here pretty soon. And that's that's going to be pretty exciting because we get to breed porcupines for the first time. Well, Turbo is short but sweet. Thank you so much for your time, Turbo. Enjoy your tater. Mammals being something more of a passion thing for you, right? I mean, I do I do know you have a a, a female lined up, but for the most part, these are just your pets, right? Yeah, they're pets. Right. Yeah, if they have a name, they're a pet. <laughs> I don't name animals. If you name an animal, you get attached. Okay. You know, and so the only animals that we have names for, I mean, like these tegus, uh, one's red and one's black because there's a red one and a black one. So you got any it's, reptiles or animals you work with that is for, you know, something that's been helping you financially at all or anything that's like kind of levitating your brand in a way? Uh, we do the ball pythons. So 21 plus years, 20 plus years, you've been doing ball pythons, you yes, said, sir. right? 21 years on the ball pythons. How long has this room been set up the way it's been set up? So for? this room's been here for about 11 years now. I uh, started out in an 11 by 11 room. That lasted a short period of time and we had to grow. When I saw a pied for the first time, I thought, man, I gotta have one of these. And then this. And, yeah. <laughs> It's crazy what one morph could lead to, right? Right now we're on the hatching side of the, the room, right? So this yeah, is where this, a lot of your grow ups and hatchings are at? This is the hatching side. This will be all the stuff for sale from here forward. Uh, this back here is what I keep. And then I have males back here in the back corner. And then this is my female side. How many clutches a year are you at right now? Uh, we did 97 this year. Uh, well, we're still not done. We've still got stuff waiting to lay. Uh, this girl right here, just any day now. And so, this is an inchy, inchy lemon blast clown. 
that we ran to a yellow belly dream signal. So Earl, for somebody who's been in the game as long as you have, how do you feel about things progressing towards triple quad recessives? Are you okay with that? Do you feel like you're gonna be heading different directions? What's your game plan overall with these recessive combos getting, getting heavy out there? I think if you're not going triple and quad, you're backing up. Message! The, the biggest thing is, codoms are over. I mean, don't get me wrong, you gotta have codoms in all your triples and quads. Uh, that's why we're stacking so many codoms on top of stuff right now. But the biggest thing is... Two hours later. You got some, most people following one person and that's gotta stop. You gotta, you gotta make your own dream. Take a branch and, and run with it. Exactly, uh, I agree with that. 100%. This project right here, this is something that not too many people are doing and it's just amazing and i hate white snakes i think white snakes are ridiculous there's a lot of people that love them but no i, I, no, I, I already know what, what direction you're going with this because uh, i'm a believer with this too now i hold back now, certain blue-eyed lucy's let's, let's hear it. that's a blue-eyed lucy clown wow You can definitely see it. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Go towards the head more if you don't mind. And go like towards more the neck, like kind of work way, work your way down the body real quick if you don't mind. Yeah, I get, oh, okay, there you go. All right. What we're doing here is we're gonna start adding a lot of other codoms on top of that to see where we start bringing pattern back from the Blue-Eyed Lucy. I think you're gonna get five or six jeans in there and you're gonna be able to see all these real crazy patterns. This will be one we're adding in right away. So that's a pastel or pastavi leopard clown. So adding that pattern in on a blue-eyed Lucy clown, I mean, that's gonna be amazing. See the jeans on this one more time, bro? It's a leopard pastavi clown. You want to get this in a super form with Mojave is what you're yes. saying. You want to see where that goes, obviously. We'll be we'll be taking a chance at the uh, Blue-Eyed Lucy Batman Clowns this year. Okay. Uh, another one is, this is a Mojave Spot Nose Clown. So putting that into a Blue-Eyed Lucy, I mean, it's just going to be incredible seeing what kind of patterns we can actually pull. And it's kind of cool because they're kind of interactive in the fact that you have to do the black lights to even see all this stuff. I mean, it just makes it more exciting, you know what I mean? There's going to be a point where you're not going to have to have the black lights because the pattern's going to start coming back through eventually. But you're at the pioneer stage of this shit. So yeah. Right now, you, it's important to kind of see where direction this is taking you, right? Exactly. Which is awesome because I feel like a lot of people get to the all white snake and they stop and they go, well, you know, we don't want to even pursue this, but why? Then you could break through the mold. And I've already had this idea, and I see, I'm glad to see someone more advanced actually putting it through. So I don't like Blue Eyed Lucy, so I never have. But this is a way for me to like something Appreciate and, and it, right. still work with that project. Now, this is one that everybody always wants to see. This is the Lavender Puzzle. And these things are incredible. Lavender puzzle, huh? That's fucking nice. I'm not gonna lie. There's only two of these in the United States, and they're both sitting in this room. And I, this project is, man, it's you got made, so many layers. Oh no, I just bought these. Who did this come from? These come from a guy that nobody even knows of in Tennessee. Tennessee. He's a very small time breeder that, that got into a decent project and hit right off the bat. And you're tapped in on it. I've got a, a breeder size female and him. Right. So it's pretty incredible. So this is the LSR Fire Clown. Wow. You know, why don't you go ahead and break down what the LSR means? I mean, obviously it's LSR Reptiles, but what, what, what's the meaning well, behind it? We brought in a fire from Africa back in 2009. Uh, we actually thought it was vanilla and we made a white snake the first year when we were trying to make vanilla creams. Uh, so the LSR fire turned out to be a lot like Desert Ghost in a codon form. Everything that we make looks like Desert Ghost. The cool part about this is everything that I've ever done in mahogany, mahogany overpowers everything. 
This is a mahogany LSR Fire Clown. The LSR Fire overpowered the mahogany. Mahogany usually has a solid colored head and the LSR Fire brought pattern back to the head, which is incredible. It, it busted up the pattern, the mahogany did, but it gave it a, a color unlike anything I've ever seen. Yeah, I think so, they're on something real for sure. That's neat. Oh, wow. This is this is an LSR Firefly spot nose. This thing is just incredible. LSR Firefly spot nose. Not half for anything? Nope. Wow. It's a white snake. Now, we're going to add one more gene to that. That's an LSR Firefly spot nose pin. It's DG, bro. You're right. <laughs> like exactly. But it, this is a codom, you're saying? It's a codom. Oh, it's a codom, but bro. I got to see the Desert Ghost version of this, and man, it's hard to tell them apart. Oh, wow. That's an LSR Fire Firefly scaleless. I mean, I gotta ask you since you got a skeleton out in front of us. Which, which your, um, you know, how do you feel about the skeleton project right now? I mean, we're gonna talk about it tonight, obviously. I'm still, I'm still working the skeleton project. I don't, you I don't haven't given up yet, though. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, I got pied in the incubator right now. Uh, we're waiting on the clutch for clowns. Uh, there's certain ones I'm gonna make, and then I'm not gonna be messing with it anymore myself. There's a lot of controversy, and most of it comes from people that are not even in the project, and they probably needed to just keep their mouth shut. This is the LSR Fire OD. And that thing just turned out incredible. Okay. Yeah, if you, if you could come earlier, I mean, not super early. The LSR Fire gets rid of all the dots and the alien heads. Uh, it wipes out about 90% of it, just cleans it up real good, and gives it that Desert Ghost feel. So I've been working this as Desert Ghost, that way I know which direction to go with my Desert Ghost. Do you have any help in here, or is it just you and the, you and the old lady? No, I have uh, Kyle and Ashley from TER Reptiles do a lot of stuff for me. Uh, they clean most of the cages. Uh, especially the last five months when I've been remodeling my house. They've been taking care of this while I've been remodeling a lot. Put a lot of hours in out here, about 80 hours a week. What about that? Let's talk about some hours you just put into a new room inside. <laughs> <laughs> I put about 200 hours in this new room, man, and it's it turned out incredible. You said venomous room. Got chairs out here. Got it. You got it. Chairs out here. Venomous room slash daycare room. This is a... <laughs> Safest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> That's good. Oh wow, I knew things were hot. And they sure are. So where are we at right now, Earl? Uh, so this is my office, and my office houses all the rattlesnakes and Gila monsters. Okay. And so this is my male. He wants to come out real bad right now. Hey buddy. My female's gravid. She's sitting over here. The lights just went out and I have no way to turn these lights back That's on. That's fine. Everything's natural, I get it. Uh so yeah, every, we've got a whole panel of stuff in the back that operates all this, the heat, the lighting, everything. Uh, so right here we have a desert Masasagua. It's a beautiful animal. He's still pretty small. He, he's trying to be tough, but you can barely hear him. He did rock. Oh, wow. And he is actually from Texas. Yeah, it looks like a, like a native snake to me. Wow, this is uh, awesome. In the back corner, she's impossible to see right now unfortunately but so this is a gold western diamond bag and she was actually born in this house uh, we found a bunch of snakes on, a, on an oil field location and brought them home and the next morning they had 14 babies in a cage and she was one of them wow so this is a het for caramel uh, prairie rattlesnake that's a female this is an Arizona black rattlesnake and for those of you all that don't know he's not black that's just weird, all right? But the thing about them is they go through about three color transformations in their life. Their final color trans transformation, they'll be jet black with gold pinstripe. They're amazing animals. Tiger rattlesnake. And unfortunately, without any lights, you're never going to get the true color on that snake. That snake is pink. Yeah, I was going to say, there's there's probably some pinkness to that. Yes. I, could, I could even see it from here. It looks like a T positive. They're a beautiful animal. Wow, that's a gorgeous snake, man. This one is very questionable the deadliest rattlesnake in the world the mojave rattlesnake is right there with it they both carry both venoms both neurotoxin and hemotoxin so but that's and this snake here has the smallest head of any rattlesnake in the world so this is my office 
Uh, this is where we do all the editing and all that stuff. It's where you do a lot. Of, you free a lot of headspace in this room. I feel like yeah. you don't have to think about much, but just you know, do, doing the but work. And you get to hear them in the background is awesome. I mean, I gotta say, it is kind of therapeutic. Maybe <laughs> maybe not for everyone, but speaking of therapeutic, why don't we go to a room that I feel yes, like sir. anyone would be therapeutic for? It. And this was something just done not too long ago. Am I right? Yes. But what inspired? First and foremost, what inspired this? All right, so the biggest thing here is. And I don't mean this in, in any bad way at all, but anybody can breed a ball python. Message! I agree. All right. But let's take it to the next step. Let's take like red-eyed croc skinks. This cage has 16 red-eyed croc skinks in it. Everybody said there was no way possible that I could colonize red-eyed croc skinks. Well, I've done it. And they're getting along perfectly. I've got babies running around in here. I've got eggs in there. I mean, they're breeding. These are hard animals to take care of to start with because if they dry out, they die. If they overheat, they die. Pretty sensitive. You know, they're very, very sensitive animals. And for years, I, I didn't want to mess with them. And then I decided, I want to try this. I want, I want to push myself to the next level. So I started out with one pair and then it grew into a six, seven pair. And now we've got this. And so not only do we have the red eyes, on this side of the room, we have the white-eyed crocodile skinks. So we're starting a new species of them. And so they all come from generally the same area. The red eyes are in Papua New Guinea. These are gonna be more down in the rice fields. So here we have a frilled dragon and he's perched up there for everybody to see him. <laughs> he sure uh, does, uh, I guarantee it. Yeah, look at him. He knows he looks good. I just wanted a place where I could come in and sit down and relax and, and, and look at my animals. The ball python room is great. We get to go through and we get to play with the animals as we're cleaning them. But to see these things in somewhat a natural environment is so much more. Um, so here we have sailfin dragons. You can see one here, one over there. There's three of them in here. There's two females and one male. These guys in their glass cages, you couldn't get close to their cage and they'd freak out. I can open these doors and these things don't freak out at all. Here's, there's two of them sitting right here. And they don't freak out at all anymore. It's, it's just amazing. You know, I can hand feed them now. I mean, uh, usually even a camera switches everything up and yes. freak anything out and they're not even tripping right no. now. They're just, this has been so much more putting them in, in this giant enclosure. It's just giving them that natural environment where they can move around and, and by the way, this is where the podcast is going down tonight. Normally, this isn't set up in Big Earl's room. We're taking up space. Um, but Earl, listen, before we close out this vlog, how can anyone be on top of your production? Anything you have for sale, what's the best way for anyone to be on top of any of that stuff? The best way is to go to my website, uh, LoneStarReptiles.com. These cages have cameras in them. We're going to go live stream with these cameras soon. We're working on the, the all the programming and all that now. So you'll be able to go to my, my website, do the drop down uh, tab, it'll have all the available care sheets and then it'll have live streams. You'll click on live stream and you'll be able to click any cage in here in any room and live stream those cages. You'll see what we're seeing at that time. Me and Earl got to wrap things up. We have an important podcast going down because this is the damn pre-party for Arlington and ARBC, which my man, you are legendary at. I've seen you at every damn Arlington and I'm sure people can catch you at any Arlington as well. Uh, but thank you so much, Big Earl. Appreciate you and I cannot wait to get this damn podcast going and kill it, man. Thank you. Thanks, man. All right. All right. Bill's gonna close this out for me, okay? Just got done hanging out at Big Earl's house, gonna have a podcast. Bill, man, welcome to Texas, man. Texas, Texas is the place to be. But guys, this is all we have for this week's episode of Snake Trap Session Vlogs. I will catch you guys next week, and we're out. Mm. Che mm. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you for watching this week's Trap Talk clip. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, drop me a comment. And if you're looking for exclusive, non-release content here on YouTube, you're going to want to go down to the link and join the Trap Talk Patreon family. Once you become a part of the Patreon family, you get a link to the Discord, and then you also get tapped into all unreleased content. Thank you so much for all the love and support, and I'll catch you guys here next week. Cheers!